In this lesson, I'm going to be rigging the next robot that's going to act as a spectator for this production. This robot by Mesh Chaos. It's called the Urban Android Cyberpunk. So I'm going to rig it and I'm going to set up an end cloth system for its clothing so that I get some believable movement in the clothing as it stands in the background. But before I get started, I want to talk about a decision I made in the previous lesson with the first robot I rigged, the multi-head robot. So because I started out texturing this thing, well, not really texturing it, applying materials to specific sections of it because it doesn't have a UV map. It was built for 3D printing. Two lessons ago, I went in and I was selecting faces and applying materials. And by the end of the lesson, I realized that I would not be able to export those colors that have been applied to the faces as an alembic format. So I resolved that for this particular robot, I would use the FBX version for my crowd. So I altered my production pipeline to include this uh, new addition to the way in which the crowd is going to be pushed into the uh, background for rendering. So I included FBX here and some of these uh, robots are going to come in as FBX and some of them are going to come in as a Lambic. So this is a test of the crowd with the FBX version and it is very slow. I'll go over uh, where I learned how to do this. It's a really cool guy on, on YouTube talks about his process of producing crowds. I'm not going to do exactly what he did. I'm going to be using different partitions so I can have uh, seated robots in specific sections versus standing robots. So I might do something a little bit more complex. But the important part of this is that when I try to scrub the timeline with this animation, this is just a test animation I did. It's very slow. It's chugging. And it's not too much of a big deal because this is about, I, I don't even think I'll have this much, this many of these robots in the scene. If I look at the scene, that particular robot I would make occupy this region here. And because of how big it is, I'll only be able to fit about 20 of them in here. So I have to make a decision about whether I want to keep these uh, shading choices that I did to these partitions and have a slower crowd or if I should just go with an Alembic crowd and let me show you the same test but with Alembic and this is the Alembic crowd and it is so much faster. I can pretty much scrub and get immediate feedback. So just for the sake of, of speed of simulation and, and a not so hefty scene, I will probably resolve to go with the Alembic, but that does mean that I would have to texture this asset or, or reapply materials to it, but not as complex of a, a material setup as I did two lessons ago. It'll be a lot simpler. I'll just be selecting whole meshes and applying various materials to these entire sections as a whole. It won't be as detailed as the FBX version, but it, it'll just be flat colors just applied to these individual pieces. And that might not be a bad thing because this is a background asset and it shouldn't be drawing too much attention. So it might be fine to just be applying materials to these meshes as a whole because i'm not going to import it and go back in trying to select these faces and try to isolate lights and things like that ultimately if the fbx version i'm just using about 20 that would be maybe something within this vicinity if it doesn't really slow down the scene too much i might go with the fbx version just for him all right let's move on to the urban android and get started with him I won't have any issues with uh, him because he has a UV map, he has textures, but even with this character, I'll just import it after the animation has been made into the crowd scene and apply flat colors to everything just so it doesn't end up looking too busy in the background. I don't want any high contrast uh, values or color choices pulling the eye to the background too much. They should work as a collective, as one mass. And it's not to say that the color choices I made here or the selections I made here don't work. They work really well. I do think that maybe the pink neck and the pink uh, drapery here are too, the value is too high and it uh, makes for some really high contrast. And I think that will draw a lot of attention. So that's something I could change if I decide to use the FBX version. 
uh, but it does work like as a collective if they're standing in the background as a collective i don't think that they're going to be too distracting before i get started with the hrk skeleton i have to fix something under this character that's going to impact how the end cloth interacts with the character's body so if i hide the clothing you'll see that he looks very emaciated he doesn't really have a tangible core for his top to interact with so i'm going to create a better mesh for his torso and it's going to connect to this hip piece of geometry here and it's also going to connect to the head of the humerus first thing i'm going to do is select all of these meshes and i will just create a copy of them i'm going to use them as a live mesh to draw new geometry so i'll duplicate them and merge the result into one singular mesh and then let me hide that temporarily just so i can select this and hide them and show this again this is the singular piece that i'm going to be using as a live mesh to draw first i'll delete history i should delete history on everything so i'll select all this delete history and select all this try to get it into a group call it urban android cyberpunk and i'll put that in a temporary layer and my focus is here so i'm going to turn this into a live mesh and i'm going to go into my polygon modeling tool and i'm just going to construct one half of this i'm actually first going to assign a new material just a simple blend so i can see what i'm doing go back to my modeling toolkit grab my quad draw and i'm going to start drawing from the center point um, i'm eventually going to connect all of these start constructing some geometry it's going to act as the singular geometry okay that one seems to be a reversed face I do not want that, so I'm going to grab this face, reverse it, and go back into quad draw. So I constructed something uh, with the quad draw tool and my polygon modeling tools just to act as the core. And then I selected all the edges and centered them. Now it's time to mirror this result to create a tangible uh, core for this character. So I'm going to go to mirror, hit apply. I have um, 
it that I'm using the wrong uh, mirroring across the wrong axis so I'll go apply and that should be it I don't like that uh, this over here it's just a little too close so I'm going to move that out the way and try the mirror again okay so this is a core that's good enough for the end cloth to collide with let me turn on symmetry in the X and adjust some of these points all right that should be it and bring everything back and hide this uh, surface it's no longer needed and now I can bring the whole character back and this is what will be underneath the clothing now this little core I turn on the clothing to see what I have yes so it should do a good job a better job colliding with uh, the clothing I've finished creating the core apply the material to it the same material that this black color is for now that's the temporary material it will have and I've organized everything including the fingers in preparation for rigging I've separated the geometry into the pieces that I need but now one thing I need to do is put this thing in the t-pose so that the joints can run straight it's just a safety measure with human eye care what I'm going to do is duplicate this character and hide the original one and this will be the t-pose t-pose this will be the original I'll eventually delete this and I should be able to do this on both sides but I think I'm just going to delete one half and just do it on one half so I'll grab all elements of the arm start with the arm grab all its elements and add this to the selection and then I'll isolate it hit F8 to go into component mode and make sure symmetry is off then I will delete all the faces on one side and then I will grab these again all of these should be in a group uh, let me undo that make sure I'm selecting the groups of the fingers that I created And with the palm all right so that should be everything related to the hand and I'll group it call it arms because I'm going to mirror it very soon so it describes both of them and I'm going to go into the front view center my pivot first for the entire arm and then move the pivot so that it's right there and then just rotate this to be in t-pose and that is fairly straight I see a little bit of crookedness that might be worth fixing let me look at all these fingers and this wrist see if this is something I should perhaps move down yeah that will work like that moved a little lower because I'll do the same thing with the legs but I should be able to grab all these pieces now and shift right click to mirror them make sure I'm mirroring across the right axis into the negative axis and go apply that should create everything on the other side and now it's time to do the same thing for these legs it's a little bit simpler because we don't have all the fingers I'll call these legs and I'll go to the front view and isolate this hit F8 to go into component mode delete all these faces Grab the legs again, center pivot, get this at the core, and rotate to 
get a straighter leg. And I think that the next course of action will be to grab these sneakers. Uh, freeze transforms. Get them rotated so they're planted. And I think this should be good. That's fairly straight. Then we go to the right view, inspect it. Still looks planted. So that's good. And I'm going to select all these and apply to mirror. All right, so the character is now in T pose and ready for rigging. I'm going to select all these geometries because of all the mirroring and grouping and straightening I've done. And I'm going to freeze daily history and then freeze transforms. Just go down and make sure everybody has lost their data. And there's no information here. Okay, everybody looks good. All the data is gone. All right, next order of business, I'm going to load in the human IK skeleton, start positioning it. So I'll create a skeleton pretty small. Based on my skeleton size initially, I suspect that I have not done what I'm supposed to do to set this character to real world scale. So I'm going to go in the front view and I'm going to go create measuring tools and just see what I'm looking at in terms of height. Yeah, this character is obscenely large. So I'm going to do a little bit Get rid of the human IK skeleton and set this character to real world scale. To help me do that, I'm going to load in my the main character of this performance and use her to size this character down. So that's her down there. I just dragged her into the shop. She is set to real world scale. And I am going to make sure I delete this skeleton definition. Looks like I forgot to delete it. And grab this character and scale it down. It's a fairly tall character. She is about six feet with her ears included. So he could be maybe a little bit above her, about the same height as her, just slightly taller. It is a long character type. So I think that's. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll hide her or I'll just put her in this folder I've created called a trash. And go back to creating this skeleton, this human IK skeleton. Actually, I always have to remember to freeze transforms because I do have data in here now. So I'll go freeze transforms with human IK create the skeleton and that looks more reasonable. All right, I'm going to go shading x-ray joints and start getting the hips into position like I did with the previous character. It's about a good spot. Let me make sure the clothing are off that I'm positioning the hips correctly. I do want to move the character just a little bit uh, back into the right view just so they are truly in the center of the shot. And that means I might have to make some alterations to the, the leg. I think I can do it as a collective. I'll grab this. I want it to be straight. And then I'm going to grab everything from the knee down. And just straighten it again. And group that first. Center the pivot in the center of the knee. And then just straighten that. Okay, so then that means I have opened the whole thing 
and make sure to grease transforms and everything. That should all be good. Turn back to the front and continue this positioning now that I've gotten the char character in the center of the scene. His hips are gonna be around there. And just like before, I'm only positioning one side. So I'll make sure move the character just a little bit forward. Sorry, the skeleton a little bit forward. And grab the hips, make sure they're centered. Go to the right view. Should suffice. Move this down. And I could move it a little bit back, it's fine. Let's go to the front view and inspect the skeleton, make sure it's at a reasonable place. It doesn't travel all the way down the leg because I haven't done the best job of straightening the foot. So I'm going to work on that. So I'm going to grab his foot, his shin and the foot. Isolated, go F8, delete one half. Group this, go to the front view, center pivot, go to this edge here, bring everything back and try to straighten this just a little bit more. And then grab this sneaker and align it one more time. And just check now with the right leg, with the left leg, the left foot. And that's a lot better. It's more in the center and it'll suffice, it's fine. I'm gonna grab everything again, all the geometry. and freeze transforms. I should mirror first, so I'm gonna right click and mirror. And now freeze transforms and everything. All right, so this is all just to ensure that I have a fairly straight leg and that the joints are traveling right down to, to the correct locations. All right, so that's So that's there. This is supposed to be at the ball of the foot. Actually, no, it's supposed to be right in the center because I this is where it is going to be pivoting from and I don't want um, it to try to swivel from the ground. So it should be in the central part of the foot right there. All right, so now it's time to move up here and get this neck area. I'm gonna leave the chest there. I think the neck is also in a fairly good place and the head I'll try to bring down, I'm holding insert and moving it. I'm going to grab this thing and make sure that it's somewhat in the center. So what I probably will do is offset everything at the top because I want uh, it to be straight. This is a machine, it's not a real anatomy, so I have a lot of liberties when it comes to moving things around. So I'm gonna take the entire head and just move it back so it's a little bit in the center. We'll go back and delete history on everything again. And yeah, so this should be at the head and it's fine. I'm not gonna actually use this internal piece over there, so I'm also gonna put it in the trash. It's not uh, needed, so I'll grab it. I don't know why it's called shoes. I'll just dump it in here. It's not needed at all. I'll start positioning this clavicle. I'll just go to the front view. As long as I have something that allows the arm to be straight, I'll stick with that. I'll move this into the core. 
move this into the elbow. Now I do realize I was not, I'm not as straight as I thought I was, but I wonder if it really matters. Let me grab this arm and try to do some additional straightening. Delete the entire side and grab all these pieces and mirror so the changes can propagate to the other side and yeah i think this is good come just a little bit lower it's not a big deal yeah that should be fine let me extend this and see where it lands in the wrist This one's not as straight as I would like, so I'm going to turn off joints and grab all of this. Probably should be just a little bit more careful about how I grab them. All the fingers are in groups, so I don't want to grab the individual geometry. So I'll grab the groups and this geometry. I'll group it. Center pivot. I'm gonna have to mirror again to this and rotate this so it's just a little straighter like that. So do that thing again. Go F8, grab all these faces, delete them. Grab this. Shift right click and mirror. And that should send the update to the other side. Okay, so that's the joint chain in the arm from the front view looks good. I'll go to the top view, see how things are working. Yeah, not so good in the top view. I have Turn off geometry, find out where this is. I'm going to start here and I'm going to straighten this as best as I can, this axis. And then I'm also going to move it back. I'm gonna grab the subgroup that represents the elbow and I'm going to rotate it so it's centered. I'm going to grab the entire arm and it's decide go to F8. So I grab this whole thing. We're in F8 now. Delete everything on the other side. I have to mirror the individual pieces, which is exactly what I want to do. So I'll grab all the individual pieces. Make sure geometry selection is on. Grab the individual pieces and mirror. Yeah, it should be straight now. And the joint should be charted to the center of everything. So it's okay to be modifying the geometry as you go, as long as you haven't um, skinned anything yet, but there's no connection. You can go around and play with the geometry as much as you want to get it looking straight uh, or get it in a T-pose. I'm going to hold down shift and select all these again, and I'm going to delete history and freeze transforms to get rid of any history that I've accumulated with all the operations I'm performing on the geometry. All right. So the next thing to go is the fingers and I'm going to go in a four panel view to resolve this. Go shading x-ray joints and I did make a mistake I went x-ray I should be looking for x-ray joints x-ray is wrong for what I'm trying to do here I'm trying to see the joints through the geometry all right so there goes all four views all right I'm going to quickly get uh, this part of it done and get the fingers I'll start positioning in all views. There is a snap to 
projected center here, which I want to try out. I haven't actually tried out that tool yet, but it's supposed to help get uh, joints to the center of geometry easily. The only exception here is that the center of some of these geometries is not the center I want to position my joint at. So I have to be, um, I have to use this method. It's a little bit more tedious, but it can be very easy if you just move in all views. So that's the entire hand positioned and it feels good. And that's it. All the joints are positioned. It's time to move on to the next stage. All right. So now that one side is done and it looks correct, done some inspection, everything looks good. It's time to delete the skeleton. It's time to delete the skeleton generator so that uh, this skeleton doesn't reset anymore. If I was to shut down the application, I think I mentioned it in the previous lesson and come back, it would, it, this skeleton would reset and, and mess up all these positionings. And the way you avoid that is by going display, turn off DAG objects and find the skeleton generator. There appear to be two because I did create one skeleton that I deleted. So I'm going to get rid of both of them. So I'm select both of these, delete. Okay, so this should disconnect the skeleton, but the definition will still be valid. Now it's time to reorient all these joints. So I'm going to select the root, go select dash high to select the entire hierarchy, go to my rigging tools, go skeleton orient joint tool, and I will toggle my LRAs over here just to take a look at them. I'm going to pick the standard setting that allows the X axis to travel up the chain and the Y and Z axis to act as the secondary axis. So that would be, as I mentioned in the last lesson, X for the primary axis, Y for the secondary axis. And I can pick X here, make sure this is positive. And with every single joint of the hierarchy still selected, I'm gonna go apply. And yes, looks like everything turned out fine or just as expected. And now it's time to go in there and do the manual fixes to the LRAs. All right, so I'm going to fix the first ones. I'll make sure I select by component type and select miscellaneous and then select the LRA and manually rotate it until I get the correct result that matches the parent joint. I'll do the same thing here. I want to make sure this is traveling up the axis y is pointing screen right and that's as good as it gets go to the right view and just make sure it looks okay there too so much front. Okay. So that's fairly straight. All right. So these two are fixed. I will also make this one match the head. I'm going to go down to the toe. These ones usually don't matter as much, but I mentioned before that I like to fix them because uh, when I select the entire chain, the last joint in the hierarchy dictates uh, how the manipulator tool behaves. So I like to have it uh, consistent with the LRAs of everything else on top of it. Go to perspective. 
it doesn't matter that this is just a little angled as you can see this foot is a little angled and i don't like that so i'm going to see if i can fix this without it's something I should have fixed while I was trying to put this thing in a T-pose. So I'm going to go and turn on symmetry and see if it's going to be possible to, okay. Looks like I'm gonna to have to delete one half to do this, which is fine. I'll just mirror it when it's done. Turn that off. And I will go to the bottom. Actually, first I'm going to go to perspective, make sure that my pivot is in the right place. Go to the right view. Make sure I'm swiveling from the core of the foot here. Go to the front. The core of the ankle, sorry, is what I meant to say. And rotate so that it's fairly straight. Go to the bottom. Yeah, and that's pretty good. I'll take that. Yeah, that's fairly straight. Let me turn DAG objects back on. Go object, mirror, and go back to deleting history on all this stuff. Delete history for each transforms. Okay. Yeah. And this LRA is now fine and the foot is straight. Uh, last LRA I want to fix, or the last LRAs I do want to fix are this one right here, the tip of the fingers. So I'll go back to my miscellaneous and just ballpark this one. Okay, I want to make sure it's fairly correct right there that should match its parent and we'll do the same thing here to get this wrist too. This one I could do in the various views. So that's all of them. All the LRAs have been fixed. I noticed a few mistakes on some of these LRAs. I'm going to select them and fix them. They don't look uh, like they're rotating in the right direction. Or they don't look like they will rotate in the right direction. So I'm going to straighten them out. And look down the chain, make sure everybody is has a reasonable LRA to do what's expected. Them. Yeah, this one is really
Uh, and looks like I left out the thumb. Let's remember to never leave out the thumb. And I do think I might have messed up the thumb. I'm gonna to try to keep it consistent with the rest of the fingers. Y is pointing upward. So I'll try to do that here. All Tests. I'm going to select the joint and go select hierarchy and just rotate it. See if I get reasonable behavior. That is reasonable based off of the way the thumb is oriented. Do the same thing here. Select hierarchy. That's also reasonable. Select hierarchy. Yep, that's also reasonable. It's a little crooked, but it's fine. This is not a an asset that particularly has to be perfect. This is good enough for the type of animation I'm going to be putting on it. Yeah, so all orientations seem to be fine. And if they're not, come back and do some reparative work, but Ultimately, everybody looks good. Again, I'm going to go through and do a inspection to make sure that all the, I don't have any values in my joints, which in my rotation, which I more than likely won't, but I just like to check anyway, just in case I've moved something incrementally. I'll check it with uh, the select tool instead of any of the transform tools so I don't accidentally move anything. I'm gonna hit down. Yeah, everybody seems to be fine. So there's no values in any rotations anywhere. It's just a Cautionary measure. Sometimes all these movements with the transform tool active produce um, rotations. Okay, looks good. Another thing I forgot to do again is name the HIK node. So it has this default character. Um, I'm going to try to rename it. I don't think it's going to take but I'll attempt it anyway urban let's call it a android underscore actually no underscore it's already going to keep that underscore nope looks like it worked out fine I think it renamed everything all the skeletons that I have yeah and it's fine I think I caught this one a lot earlier so it was easy to fix it's now time to mirror the other side of the chain. So I'm going to go to my root skeleton, go mirror joints. And one mistake I made previously was I have to be very careful about this, uh, how left is spelled. It's spelled with an uppercase, so I have to make sure that I'm finding left with uppercase. Just like before, I have behavior and I'm mirroring across the XY plane. I'm going to select the foot, apply that appears to be wrong no not the xy plane the yz plane so i made a mistake over there it's supposed to be yz apply and do the same thing here apply make sure behavior is checked so i get you get this opposite type of behavior 
All right, now it's time to connect uh, these joints back to their respective representations in the HIKUI. I'm gonna start with this collar. It's in here. I'm going to click here, double click, go up, start connecting the rest of them. All right, click. I'll just use the assign to select the bone. I don't like this double click thing. It's really problematic for me most of the time. So right click, assign selected bone, and I'm gonna go down and assign all of these. Okay, so I'll grab this end joint and assign. That should be fine. The valid definition and the tire skeleton is connected back to the definition. And it does look like I did forget to connect these end joints. I thought they weren't connected. And just like the last lesson, I did the same. I made the same mistake, assuming you didn't have to connect them. So I do have to come over here, select these end joints and make sure they are in fact wired to their respective uh, joints in the UI. And that's the last one. Okay. I'm pretty much done now. And just like before, I'm going to test the control system before I start skinning. So I want to select this. Uh, we'll select dash high. We'll select the whole hierarchy and turn off the local rotation axis. Then I'll go into human IK, lock my definition, and then create control rig. And I'm pretty sure everything is fine. Yeah, it's working. Just gonna run through and test it a bit. Yeah, all the controls feel good. All right, so I'm just going to turn off the control rig in this case, and just turn the skeleton back on and just start the skinning process. This is uh, going to be also very, very simple because uh, most of it is just individual pieces. Uh, the most the more, most complex piece as far as skinning is concerned will be this torso. This is the only one that weight will have to be painted for and actually also the sneakers to isolate the shins from the foot and the foot from the toe. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to go to the rigging shelf, go skin, bind skin, and I'm going to do selective joints just like I did before, closest distance, do upper turn in to hold volume a little bit better. And all of these meshes will be skinned to the head joint. So I'll go apply. And I'll test it out. That's fine. And I'll go through and get the other pieces in the same way. All of this skinned to these two joints. Go we'll apply, test it out. Just put them on at the same time. Okay, that feels good. Go down the chain. Get the rest of them. I just have to make sure, uh, since everything is mirrored, I have to make sure I select both joints and hit apply. That's because I'm, it's bound to the skeleton. So I would have to turn this on to test it with IK. No, oh, looks like I made a mistake. Let me undo that.
There we go. That works now. So does that. Let me go get the easiest ones. two different shins so and that feels good too since the shoes are more complex i'll leave them alone the next ones i'm going to get at the fingers it's also fairly simple because they're all segments so i'll grab this geometry grab the wrist joint Careful how I'm moving these joints, even though they're controlled by skeleton. I managed to get everything. So all the fingers are done. Everything is connected here. You can grab all these fingers, the IK versions of the controls, and you should get some finger uh, articulation. All that is connected. The legs are connected. And now it's time to skin the main torso. So this torso will be connected to this joint, the thigh joint. And I'm gonna grab the neck. I'm gonna grab from the child joints so I can see everything. Uh, definitely the shoulder, the collarbone, spine one, or what will be spine two, one, zero in the hips and that should be everything so if i hit apply you see what i have when i move the leg okay so I'll rotate the torso and yeah this is this is fine i don't think i will have to do that much with the painting it's uh, done some really good distribution Twist the hips. Let me swivel the hips. Yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll activate the FK controls and see what I have. Yeah, this is, this is fine. Doesn't have to be uh, need any anatomically correct deformations because it's really not a, a human. It's just need to be good enough deformation. And all that is fine. I could twist the neck. That looks good too. And the head control. Yeah, so all that works. Uh, let me turn off the FK controls and now skin the sneakers. So that will be connected to the toes, the foot, and the shin. So I'll hit apply, activate my IK tool instead, because it looks like an IK mode, yeah. This one is not as clean, so 
king to have to do some weight painting. Yeah, there's a crossing over of vertices. We had the skeleton. Yeah, so I'm gonna start doing the manual weight painting to get this moving correctly. Going to grab my weight painting tools. So I'll grab the weight painter. And one of the first things I'm going to do is go down here to display and make it so that even the smallest influence shows up aggressively. And to do that, I would have to set max color to a low number like 0.1 so that even a small influence like this is just overemphasized. And then I will grab all the vertices on this side. Make sure it happened. And go back to the weight painting tool. And make sure that the left leg has no influence on in any of this. So I'll do a replace with a value of zero and go flood. Flood, flood, so it has no influence. Now I'll return this value back to one. And I'll do some weight painting for the toe base. I know that I want a majority of the uh, this region to be controlled by the toe. So I'll go to a value of one. And I could do, I should do a replace, I'll do a place let me make sure I have the entire thing selected I only had the faces the vertices here selected so that would make it impossible to paint here so I do want a value of one for the toe And there is a piece here, which I will allow to be designated to, I guess the foot might be better. Run a little bit of a smooth here. And I'll go to the foot. And yeah, this piece over here, I'll let uh, the foot have it. I'll just grab the vertices of these by double clicking it because it's a separate piece and go back into the weight painting tool and flood it with uh, do a flood a replace with the value of one so now the foot has full control over that and i'm also going to give the foot full control over most of this region here um, so all of this should be one Yes, all of that there. One. And then for the left leg, it should have a majority of the influence here too. So I'll make sure all this is one. All right, now time to test this out. So the, the toe has control like that. I do have to remove some of the influence of the toe from backside okay it's looking better but still a fair amount of work that needs to be done so in order to make sure I have all the faces that I need I'm going to just select the vertices here because I know a majority of these vertices 
have to be influenced by the foot. And it looks like some of them were left behind. So I'll grab all of them, as many of them as I can. Activate my whipping tool, go to the foot and flood with one. And that should take away any influence that the toe has back here. Let me. Also paint out some of the influence here by doing a replace the value of zero. Make sure I deselect everything. Yeah, so I can fine tune this. has influence over there. The foot has influence over the whole thing there. And that's good. And let me just polish these this toe by just making a very clear vertex selection and flooding it. So the toe has control over all this front region. So go over here, make sure the toe base I replace with a value of one. So that should be fine. I should now be, yeah, get reasonable behavior from the toe. Let me go shading, wireframe and shaded so I can see this better. So the toe controls that, that's fine. I do have to do some smoothing at the transition point because it feels very harsh. Um, foot controls there. Also, could do some smoothing here. I'm going to set this over there and clean this up a bit here with the weight paint tool. Grab the smooth brush, select the foot, and just smooth so that I can get this bad deformation back here. Doesn't have to be perfect, but come to as clean as possible. Get a result that's as clean as possible. Uh, I may have gone a little too far here. Grab the vertex tool, grab everything here. Make sure the foot has full influence here. Yeah, I'd rather have that. And we'll grab this area here and do the smoothing here because that doesn't look too uh, good there. So I'll grab that. should suffice. This is good enough for what I'm doing here. So I'll grab this, reset just that part. Actually resets the whole rig, so that worked out great. So that's the foot. Again, this character is all the way in the background. A lot of this weight painting you're not going to see, and I'm not going to be using most of this. I don't think I will need this heel raise at all. These idols are, actually I will need this. The character will be crouching, so I will need to sort of bend this, but it, it's so far away. The way painting does not need to be perfect at all. These are background characters. All right, so it's time to mirror the weights. 
one way I like to do that to make sure things turned out the way I wanted. Let me go shading, turn off x-ray. I'm going to isolate this and I'm going to go into the wave paint tool, select this side and bring about the mirror tool so I can see the changes happen on the right side, make sure I'm doing the right thing. So I want to go across the YZ plane and let me see if I, yeah, that was correct. So I'm going from positive to negative and it transferred everything. So I should have all the wave painting the same on the other side. And let me check that. Okay, so we're good. This is fine. There's a little protrusion of the shin. So I'll just do the right thing. I will grab these two joints, grab these uh, shin joints and go skin, edit influences, and add influences so that I can add these two. Let them control parts of the shin now. So I can grab the shin, go to my wave paint tool, and they should now be in here. So if I isolate this, yeah, it's, yeah, they're not uh, contributing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do some painting, again, with a value of one for the right side. Well, actually, I'll work on the left side and just mirror the results. So a value of one here. All right, so that when I grab the foot, let me turn on the IK controls and I rotate it. Yeah, it now controls part that part of the shin. And all I have to do is now just mirror the results over. So I'll turn on the weight painting tool with this selected, I will go mirror weights, apply, and yeah, everything transferred over. So that's it for the weight painting. Everything has been weight painted. So I'll test this thing by moving it around. Yes, everything is weight painted. And this is a functional rig. I should clean up some of this because that is not so good. So I'll come up here, look at what I have, and just ensure that spine two has a majority of the influence here. I'll go add and I'll add a value of 0.1 and just paint here. Okay, so that, that way when I grab this hand and I bring it down, it shouldn't have influence, not much influence on the spine. Let me try this again. And what I should focus on doing is grabbing the left arm and making sure it has no influence. So I'll just do a replace with zero just clear its influence. That extends too far down. Yeah, the left shoulder should not impact this much of the torso. Yeah, and this should be the responsibility of the spines. Yeah, I mm, think that's good. So if I grab this, yeah, it doesn't have uh, control of the torso. So that's good. I'll grab that. Narrow weights, apply, and that should extend to the other side. Yeah, so now we're good. This should be a, this rig should be fine for what it's intended to do. Check out the head, neck. That looks, feels good. Okay, 
second. If there's any additional cleanup, I'll do it when I start the animation if there's any issue. But for the most part, this uh, feels good. Before I proceed to the next step, there's a slight mistake I made that I want to fix. Um, this is already skinned and I did adjust the weighting. But when I moved this hand back, I forgot to make these vertices wrap around the head of the humerus correctly. So it's offset. So the solution I'm going to use, even though it's already skinned and I do have uh, my weights painted, um, rather than do this whole exporting weight maps and bringing them back in with after rebinding, I'm just going to select and move these vertices. And then I'll, I'll do a history, a special type of history deletion. So I'll make sure this is selected. Bring it back. Make sure I move this back. Scale it up a bit. And because symmetry is on, it worked on both sides. And then I'll select this mesh, which I should now have. And go edit, delete by type, non deformer history. And this should have made the changes without breaking anything. Yeah. I still have my mesh. We are operating correctly. At the skeleton yeah so that's how you can make uh, changes to geometry after you skinned or well, one way as uh, I could have just exported weights uh, unbind make the adjustments rebind to all the joints and then import the weights back onto the mesh all right the last part of this lesson is to set up the clothing to simulate with end cloth what I've done here is created a proxy mesh a single proxy mesh that's going to control all the pieces of his clothing. This is what his clothing looks like. So I'm going to isolate them here. It was created in Marvelous Designer. I can tell based off of how the UVs look that it was assembled uh, in Marvelous with panels uh, spread out like uh, Marvelous panels. And also the triangulation often the not means it comes from marvelous but i combine all the panels and you have a shorts we have a top and a hoodie and i just created one low res proxy that's going to control all of them i think that'll be enough for the type of move, movement i'm looking for the other thing i've done is i don't want this thing this end cloth to try to collide with the body because the body is fairly complex so if I hide this low resolution mesh and I hide these colliders I've created, this body is, is much, you know, some of them are very dense and you have these really advanced detail here. I don't want the end call trying to figure that out. So these colliders have been made and they've only been extended to areas that I think are going to collide with the attire based off of the type of animation I'm going to do. This is as far as I'm willing to go uh, because I don't think I'm going to have any other fingers really collide with his body but if that it comes to that i might create some additional proxies what i'm going to do with these proxies is parent them to the human ik skeleton so i'm going to hide the controls show the human ik skeleton and i'm also going to hide the geometry for now and i'll just take these and just parent them to their respective bones And now I'm just gonna turn on the IK controllers and test to make sure, yeah, the colliders are going to move as they should. Okay, but I haven't made any mistakes while parenting, so that's fine. And 
I'm going to now put all these colliders onto this layer so I can hide them back onto this layer. So now I can hide the colliders. I am not uh, creating one for the torso because the torso I made this and I wanted it to collide with the tire and it's low res enough. So I'll be turning this skin torso into a collider. Next thing to do is to set up the high res geometry to follow the low res geometry. So I'm going to turn both of them on and I will isolate his clothing and the low res proxy. So I'm going to select the top first and then select the low res proxy geometry that's going to be simulated with mcloth. Go to my rigging menu, go to deform and do a wrap. And I don't want an exclusive bind because these are not the same pieces of, of geometry. They're not uh, that similar. So I want sort of an averaging of what vertices on this low res mesh control this triangulated uh, marvelous designer mesh. So I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to run a little bit of a test. So I'll grab this vertice and I will hide the proxy and move it around. Yeah, and that should be fine. Um, let me hit B to go into soft selection mode. And yeah, that's good enough. Let me try another part of it like there, hide the proxy again and move. Yeah, and it controls it just fine. This is enough control for the top. Let me try one more time down here with self selection on, turn off my proxy. Yeah. That's fine. So I'll do the next one. I'll grab the shorts and the proxy. Go apply. And I'll also do the same thing with the hoodie and the proxy and go apply. And now I'll just test everything. So I'll grab this. Bring it back, hide it, and yeah, it seems to be controlling everything well, and it's not too expensive of a wrap. We'll grab these vertices here. Actually, let me isolate these again. The proxy and the clothing, so I can test the shorts. I'll grab this, grab the vertices, hide it, and yeah, it should be fine. All right. Okay. So that's the connection made between the high res clothing and the low res proxy that's going to be controlling it. Time to start creating my end cloth systems. So I'm going to hide the high res mesh. I'm going to turn on the low res proxy, grab it, go to my FX menu, go to end cloth and create end cloth. And then I'm going to grab all my passive colliders from their display group. And I'm going to go end cloth, create passive colliders. Okay. So that's everything and they should all be using the same nucleus. I'm going to run a quick test by selecting my passive colliders, selecting my end cloth. And end cloth is set to more than likely start at zero. So I'm gonna have some negative frames here as a cushion, I'll hit play. Yeah, and that's fine. All right, that's it's going to be a very fast simulation because this is really not that expensive. I'm going to set this to 3000. Mm. 
yeah that's good enough one thing i did forget was to set the main body as a passive collider so i'm going to grab that and i'm going to go and cloth create passive collider okay so it all looks good without having to set any uh, settings i think i'm going to be fine but when it's time to animate the idols if i have to i'll go in and start playing with some of these end cloth settings to get results uh, that work better if i'm having issues one thing i want to do before i continue is rename all these notes correctly because i really want to know which is which uh one easy way to do that because i created all these passive colliders at once it's a little hard to figure out which of these named uh, capsules they represent and um, these capsules by the way i created with uh, from a, a sphere so i just took a sphere and then added an edge loop and then stretched it and then just created these custom capsules so uh, one way to figure out what is what is i can grab this rigid body node go to window go to the node editor and then map it and it will tell me which of these it's connected to so i'm just going to grab uh, this name and append it to the respective so come over here map again The next order of business is to create a test animation, uh, see how the cloth simulates, and then see if I can export everything as an Alembic. I will be uh, caching whatever cloth results I get, but it's important to, to see if I can push out the high-res mesh that is being controlled by this as an Alembic. I've never tried it before. So what I'm going to do is first disable the nucleus so that I get no simulation whilst I'm animating. So I will come over here with the nucleus selected and disable it. And that should uh, leave my rig free. So I'm going to start at frame zero. And I'm going to do some simple animation. Set a key. Make the character shift your weight. And I'll turn on auto key. Go back here, set a key. Go to the next frame. And I'm going to hide the uh, clothing so I can focus on creating this animation. Go to the first keyframe. I'm going to go to human IK and make sure I select this full body so that when I set a key, it sets a key on the entire rig. Yeah, so it okay, so I'll move to the next keyframe and make sure I have the character's hands come down. This is some quick motion just to test the, the cloth, see how well it's going to simulate. It's not real animation, just some movement, see how this cloth is going to behave. I should uh, make him stand back up into the T pose. So I'm going to grab this, middle click here, set a keyframe, go here, middle click set here for it to settle a bit, and then just go back up. All right, so that's about 500 frames of animation. Set it to 600. Now I'm going to turn on first the low res proxy and uh, turn my nucleus back on. See how this thing reacts to the motion. 
the way back to the beginning. All right. One thing I did, I noticed I hadn't unchecked is cash playback. You always want to get rid of cash playback when it comes time to simulate cloth. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, hit play. Yeah, and now I'm getting simulation. So yeah, it's not bad at all. It's just, you know, I just wanted some simple cloth simulation. And this is more than enough. Yeah, looks good. I'll probably tweak it as much as I need to when it's time to create the animations if I see anything wrong. But I want to go back and I'm going to inspect it with the actual high res clothing. I'll go to Human IK, turn off these controls, these joints, so I can see this thing better. And I'm also going to turn off my colliders. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to hit play again. Yeah, very good. Not bad at all. So I have a rig character with simulatable cloth. That's going to behave well. And I don't think I'm not even going to be doing uh, actions this aggressive. It's mostly going to be standing there, holding cameras, you know, doing head bobs maybe doing some uh, foot taps and bouncing. It's just really an idle crowd watching somebody dance. So this will be more than good. All right, the next thing to do is to cache this cloth and then try to export my final high-risk cloth and this character as an Alembic format. I'm going to grab this cloth right here Make sure geometry is on. And I'm going to go to my end cache and I'm going to create a new, new cache. Put it somewhere. Make sure I'm only doing one file. I don't like to do those multiple files thing. I want the entire time slider. going to cache this. So I'll go create. Okay. So now that it's cached, I should be able to scrub the timeline. I'm fine. I will turn off the low res, turn on the high res. Okay, so that's cached animation. All right, now it's time to export all of this as a cache. I just want the geometry, so I'm going to grab the geometry folder here. And this is pretty much what I need. So I'm going to go cache Alembic, export selection to Alembic. I want the time slider, export selection. That's all I need. All right, this is a new Maya scene. I'm going to bring that Alembic in here and see if I have any issues. I'm going to go import Alembic. This is the Alembic file. Let's 
scrub and everything's here so it's fine so I go to 600 yeah I was really worried about the end cloth let me turn off cache animation yeah because the it's a high res mesh sort of wrapped to a low res mesh and I didn't think that the Alembic uh, was going to behave. But yeah, this is great. This means everything's gonna work. A nice cloth simulation. Nice, simple, cheap cloth simulation for a background character. So that's it for this lesson. In this lesson, I was able to rig him with human IK, set up his cloth, and he's ready to be a background character and to be brought into a mash network and used uh, as a crowd member. At the beginning of the next lesson, I will probably show you a test I did with him in a, in a crowd setting, just to see how this test animation operates in a MASH test, sort of like I did with the, the previously rigged multi-head robot. But in the next lesson, I'm going to wrap up the rigging phase of these robots with the last two robots I'm using, the uh, Maya robot and the Jessica rig. They're already rigged. The Maya robot is rigged with human IK also. But Jessica Rig is a custom rig, uh, as I mentioned by Thomas Wiegand. And all I have to do with her is make some modifications to create some more diverse options of her. So I'll see you in the next lesson where I wrap up the rigging of these background characters. And after that, the next thing to move on to would be the animation. So once these characters are rigged, I'm going to start creating all the animations and placing them into the background.